she was the girl holding all the aces. Her blossoming movie and music career, thanks to the high school musical franchise, a super hot co-star boyfriend in the form of uber cool Zac Efron, and all the awards, money and fame any young girl could dream of. But unfortunately for Vanessa Hudgens, the card sharks around her had some aces of their own. Photographs of her in her birthday suit. Pretty soon those images were splashed all over the internet and the sweetest young petal in LA found herself decidedly deflowered. With a natural beauty born of her Eurasian and Native American heritage and a strong connection with music, Vanessa was destined for a career in stage and screen. Her big break came through the role of Gabriela Montez in the teen hit High School Musical. I love musicals since the day I was born and um, the fact that I get to be a part of one and it's become this huge phenomenon is uh, very fulfilling for me. With its teen romance themes and feel-good dance numbers, High School Musical was a huge commercial hit and garnered two equally successful sequels. It's hard for films to transfer from America over here to the Brits and everything because the sense of humor, I think, is quite different. Um, but the fact that it did, you know, it's very amazing. It shows that musicals and music's completely universal no matter what. Vanessa soon received a recording contract with Hollywood Records, her debut album V reaching gold status in 2007. The same year, she made it onto the Forbes list of young Hollywood's top earning stars as well as People Magazine's list of 100 Most Beautiful People. Her squeaky clean public persona was topped off with her extensive work for charity. Fame had changed the life of the girl from Southern California. It's just made things way more chaotic. I mean, before I'm used, so used to just sitting around at home, just kind of doing absolutely nothing, looking for my next job. And now I wake up to paparazzi outside my house, following me where I go and not really being able to go to the malls because the girls will follow me and not let me go anywhere. And I mean, it, that's the crazy part. Things got even more crazy when the nude pictures of her were posted on the internet without her consent. Hardly a good look for the Disney Corporation's pinup girl. There was some talk of Disney dropping her from the third installment of the High School Musical franchise. Vanessa made a public apology but celebrity blogger Perez Hilton saw trouble ahead. I predict that Zac Efron and Vanessa Hudgens will break up because she's a troublemaker and he's too pretty to stay with her for that long. It seems Perez was a little premature. In fact, Zac took the news pretty well. He's such a sweet guy. You know, he's completely normal and um, he's just great. The blossoming love between the two was tested just a year later. Pictures showing Vanessa posing topless in her home emerged on the net. Perhaps Perez Hilton's prediction may yet come true. Think golf and you might conjure up images of middle-aged men whacking a ball aimlessly around a park on a Saturday afternoon. Well, when it comes to Tiger Woods, you can forget all that. He reinvented the game with his sheer athleticism, extraordinary skill and immense will to win. But his cold mask of perfection cracked right down the middle when the world learnt that this husband and father had a serious taste for extramarital bedroom romps. A taste so strong, he was forced to check himself into therapy for sex addiction. His fall from grace was spectacular. As a child, he'd been a golfing prodigy. Pushed along by his sporting dad, at only three years of age, he was on television, putting against Bob Hope. At the age of 21, after only 42 weeks as a professional, he was ranked the world's number one golfer. The only player in the modern era to have held all four major championships at once, this feat is now known as the Tiger Slam. Uh, he does not need uh, to be introduced. He's, he's a young man, you know, who has uh, flattered our pride <clears throat> because of his achievement. And it's a great honor not only to me, but uh, to South Africans that uh, we should be visited by such an eminent, eminent uh, sportsman. It has been an honor for me even uh, to keep him for about 10 minutes inside my house. I would have kept him for the whole day. Tiger was a corporate sponsor's dream. His home life seemed picture perfect, 
marrying former Swedish model Ellen Nordegren in 2003 and having two children with her. He even spoke highly of his parents. You know, my, my dad was a you know, former Special Forces. Um, he was a pretty tough guy, very focused. And I'd have to say the more competitive one was my mom. Uh, so people don't realize, you, you start talking to her, you'll see where I get a lot of my, my fire and my passion is from my mom. I get my calmness from my dad. Tiger quickly signed extremely lucrative deals with major brands like Nike and Gillette. Golf Digest tipped his combined tour winnings and sponsorship deals to top $1 billion by 2010. But while Tiger was never far from the public eye, little was really known about the man. His post-match press interviews were littered with the usual sporting cliches, offering nothing of great insight to the man behind the golf genius. All that changed in late 2009, when Tiger drove his SUV into a fire hydrant outside his home in the early hours of the morning, apparently after being chased by his wife, who was brandishing a golf club. The story exploded shortly after, when a San Diego cocktail waitress publicly claimed she'd had a two-and-a-half-year affair with Tiger. Before long, more than a dozen women had made similar claims, citing Tiger's interest in porn stars, public sex acts and drug-laden encounters. With his cashed-up sponsors running for the hills, Tiger made a public apology for his indiscretions, taking an indefinite break from the game. In the months and years to come, he will no doubt be looking to the Buddhist teachings handed down to him by his mother. You know, in the Buddhist religion, you have to work for it yourself internally in order to uh, achieve any, anything in, in life. And in Buddhism, it's set up the next life, but it's all about what you do and the internal work. Um, so that's one thing she's always preached, is you have to work for everything in your life. And you get out of it what you put into it. Um, so you're going to have to work, work a butt off in every aspect of your life. And working his butt off is exactly what will be required to get Tiger back out onto the green. She was Marilyn Monroe, the glistening blonde bombshell her public adored. But behind the glitzy facade was just a girl called Norma Jean Baker, searching for love and acceptance amid the bright lights of Hollywood. She was sexy one moment, funny lady the next, but she always exuded the slightly otherworldly quality that America fell in love with. With a mother who was in and out of psychiatric facilities and no father figure to speak of, the young Norma Jean was shunted between the homes of family members and foster facilities. Sexually abused by her mother's de facto, she had much to run from when she grew into adulthood. She found success as a model and soon gained the attention of 20th Century Fox. Under the advice of a movie executive, she changed her name to Marilyn Monroe. She appeared on the cover of Life magazine in 1952, selling herself as the modern-day Cinderella, the innocent, unwanted child who'd made it big in the movies. As was typical of her paradox, she coupled her public image of innocence with a powerful sense of sexuality. Sexual controversy was a key theme in her life, in recent years, a privately made film has surfaced in which she's seen to engage in sexual acts with an unidentified man. 100%. You could see the mold on her face. Uh, you could see her distinct, you know, distinct features she has. But she is not looking at the camera at any time. She doesn't look at the camera one time. Um, therefore, I don't know if she knew that she was being recorded. Um, she may have not known. Uh, she does not look at the camera at any time. Marilyn's dumb blonde persona struck a chord with the public through a string of commercially successful films, including Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, How to Marry a Millionaire and The Seven Year Itch. After a heartfelt but short marriage to baseball legend Joe DiMaggio, she found solace in the arms of literary great Arthur Miller. During this period, she found some acclaim as an actress but the demons from her youth were never far behind. During the shooting of her last completed film, the aptly titled The Misfits, Marilyn suffered a psychological breakdown and was hospitalized for 10 days. Over coming months, her dependence on alcohol and prescription medications increased until on August the 5th, 1962, she was found dead at her home in Los Angeles after overdosing on barbiturates. Her death was ruled a probable suicide, 
But as befits the enigmatic Marilyn Monroe, conspiracy theories abounded. It seemed America couldn't bear to close the book on a woman who'd captured their imagination so completely while hiding her private pain. It's the first hour she's beautiful. And also, I think the main reason is that she died at the age of 36. And, uh, and having died so young, and, and uh, obviously she was an absolute icon, and uh, she still will remain young. Los Angeles, city of dreams. For many performers, it's the place you go to build your showbiz persona. But for singer-songwriter George Michael, it marked the spot where the facade he'd long outgrown finally came crashing down. On the 7th of April 1998, in a public toilet in a Beverly Hills park, he was arrested by undercover policeman Marcelo Rodriguez for what's known in police speak as engaging in a lewd act. Just what a lewd act actually is, is perhaps best left to the imagination. George pleaded no contest. He was fined $810 and sentenced to 80 hours of community service. In a career spanning more than 25 years, this seemingly trivial incident in a Beverly Hills toilet block could have well brought down his career. But to George's credit, it didn't. He explained himself and his sexuality brilliantly and unapologetically in an interview with Michael Parkinson, famously saying in regard to the judge's sentence, I'd service the community, but I already have. Claiming he kept his sexuality secret for 25 years so as to not offend his mother, George was now free to live openly as a gay man. For the first time, he could speak publicly about his relationship with American sporting goods heir and art collector, Kenny Goss. Uh, congratulations on your marriage. <laughs> on oh, my marriage? Oh, not yet, not yet. <laughs> mother this, your mother this. <laughs> He's very envious. He's very oh, envious. really? Yes. Uh, because I'm gay. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. When you, you can see my partner over <laughs> here. Oh. <laughs> Congratulations. You should be envious. He's a very good looking man. <laughs> With his secret exposed, George didn't hold back in exploring his private life in his public work. In 2005, he released the documentary film, George Michael, A Different Story. The film explored the secrets surrounding his sexuality. It definitely changed my life. I mean, I think very possibly without, without that um, moment in pop history, I probably wouldn't be here tonight because this film might not have been as honest as it is. While the all-new, out and proud George Michael was keen to give his adoring public the whole truth about his private life, the film's gala opening was still a nerve-wracking time for him. It's not every day that you project your most intimate secrets up onto the silver screen. Well, as you can see, my fingers are tightly clenched. Um, no, I, I'm, I mean, I'm basically sweating with nerves right now because this is not easy for me. I have a kind of phobia about cameras, Hello. which is why, um, why I'm not on the television very much. But uh, this, is, this is something that I'm doing for my fans. Uh, and in order for them to see it, they've got to know it's out there. So. His arrest in Beverly Hills had shone new light on his songs and their meaning. And in the long run, only served to increase his popularity. His Live 25 tour in 2006 celebrated 25 years of his music and sold out some of the biggest stadiums in the world. I'm just hoping everybody enjoys it as much as I think they're going to. We've put a lot of time and effort into it and I think it's gonna people can be blown away I hope so. For all the commercial and critical success he was enjoying, George was still battling his own emotional demons. In February 2006, in the early hours of the morning, he drove his car onto the wrong side of the road in North London. Witnesses found him passed out and slumped over the wheel. It took a member of the public five minutes to wake him before he quickly drove off and collided with a bollard. He appeared in court on the charge of driving under the influence of drugs. And don't bother to ask any questions, because believe me, I'm not going to answer them. So if you just listen to this, as I haven't had a chance legally to say anything for the last eight months. He took the opportunity to hit out at the intrusive press. 
I would simply ask people to understand that the media coverage of this case has been farcical, concentrating almost entirely on the prosecution's allegations. In reality, I've been sentenced today on the basis of unfit driving through tiredness and prescription medicines, which I fully accept responsibility for. We all have a sleep, don't worry. I am, <laughs> I am glad to put this behind me, and now I'm off to do the biggest show of my life. While the incident in North London was brought on by the misuse of sleeping pills, George is also well known for dabbling in recreational drugs. In 2007, he publicly confessed that his cannabis use was a problem. Then in 2009, he proudly told an interviewer he'd managed to cut back from 25 spliffs a day down to a meagre seven or eight. There's no question that George is a man of extremes. He doesn't just write songs, he writes smash hits. And when he came out as a gay man, he didn't just make a polite announcement, he got arrested in a toilet. It just goes to show that people can find their epiphany in all sorts of places, even in a men's room in L.A. With breathtaking looks and a suave English charm, this schoolteacher's son from Lewisham has never been far away from the top of the world's most sexy lists. And like a kid in a very carnal candy shop, he's made full use of his romantic opportunities, leaving more than a little damage in his wake. With recent events suggesting he's in no hurry to change his Lothario ways, it seems that the life of one Jude Law will be as dramatic as his movies for some time to come. He literally smashed onto the cinematic landscape in the British crime drama Shopping, a story of bored youths ram raiding stolen cars. Jude met his first wife, Sadie Frost, on the film set. After a six year marriage and three children, Sadie filed for divorce, citing Jude's unreasonable behavior. Just what this behavior involved is unclear. But if newspaper reports of alleged sex swap parties are to be believed, life in Jude's house was full of surprises. Divorce negotiations were lengthy, culminating in Sadie winning their £2 million London home and receiving a million pounds in child support payments. It was a difficult time for Jude, but he managed to get some therapy through his rolling closer. It's a piece that you come out of and you can talk and talk and talk about and then it applies to your experience and so that's different to your experience and it's in a terrain that we all live through. Jude seemed perfectly cast as a roguish womanizer in the title role of 2004's Alfie, but the film flopped badly at the box office. However, the experience wasn't a total waste of time for Jude, who met Sienna Miller on the Alfie set. At the film's premiere, Jude's new flame confessed she was eager to work with yes, him again. Yes, yes, definitely. I can't think of anything, anyone I would rather work with again. I mean, he's a fantastic actor to work with. And, you know, it's like working with your best friend. It's... The couple were quickly engaged. But Sienna's feelings were sorely tested when one of Jude's children caught him having sex with the nanny. Sienna allegedly got her own back via a revenge affair with none other than James Bond actor Daniel Craig. Suitably enraged, Jude reportedly threw her out of their North London home, their engagement officially over. At the premiere of his 2006 film Breaking and Entering, journalists were quick to draw a parallel between Jude's tumultuous personal life and that of his on-screen persona. I'm, I'm like him, I'm always trying to do the right thing. I don't often do the right thing, but I'm trying to do the right thing and trying to learn lessons in, in life. And, and, and so those, those are maybe similarities. By mid-2009, it seemed Jude had done little to change his ways. Fathering a fourth child after a brief fling with American model Samantha Burke. But there are signs that Jude may be finally settling down spending his recent Christmas break with Sienna and three of his kids in Barbados. If you want proof that money and fame won't buy you happiness, look no further than Charlie Sheen. His CV features leading roles in critical and commercial hits, Platoon and Wall Street, comedy favorites, Hot Shots and Major League, as well as lucrative TV comedies, Spin City and Two and a Half Men. But it's his history of violence mostly directed towards women, that tells us more about the man. Charlie Sheen's start in the world of movies was very bright indeed. 
from a family of successful actors including father Martin Sheen and brother Emilio Estevez. He was soon featured in Oliver Stone's Academy Award-winning works Platoon on Wall Street. However, the hard reality of a life in the movie business hit home for Charlie when he missed out on Stone's follow-up project, Born on the Fourth of July. Whether or not it was that experience that sent Charlie on a downward trajectory is unclear, but things certainly weren't looking too good for him when the news broke that he'd shot his fiancée Kelly Preston in the arm. Accidentally, of course. Their engagement over, Charlie was famously named by Hollywood madam Heidi Fleiss as one of her most regular customers. Soon after, he was charged with a misdemeanor battery offense against an ex-girlfriend and found himself in court-imposed rehab for cocaine abuse. In 2002, it looked like Charlie had found the new start he needed, marrying actress Denise Richards and scoring the lead role in the sitcom Two and a Half Men. Clearly, though, Charlie's demons were still raging within. While pregnant with their second child, Denise filed for divorce. Fearing for her physical safety, she accused Charlie of abusing drugs and alcohol, as well as being addicted to prescription drugs, internet porn and gambling. Well, I'd be lying if I said it was easy. The last three years have been very difficult. To go through these things personally is very hard, but then to have it all public is uh, ten times harder. It's, uh, it's humiliating. <laughs> but, you know, I have my daughters and I just have to uh, move forward. Denise chose to move forward through making her own reality TV show, Denise Richards It's Complicated, exploring her life as a single mum and getting back into the dating scene. Charlie was unimpressed with her desire to include their two daughters in the show and attempted to block her in the courts. No, no, you don't, you don't go to court and make a you know, stand to prevent that um, if you don't firmly believe in it. So, you know, it's just a situation where, the, you know, like I said earlier, the, the world is upside down sometimes. And you haven't you found just any, gotta... any compromise or anything on it? No, I think we should all just boycott the damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> Issue a mass boycott. Charlie's efforts were unsuccessful, but he'd at least shown to his public he wasn't just a sex-obsessed drug user, he was also a caring father. With his new marriage to real estate investor Brooke Mueller and the birth of their twins in 2008, it looked like his redemption was complete. But on Christmas Day in 2009, he was arrested on charges of domestic violence and second-degree assault against Brooke. Not exactly the Christmas present he'd been hoping for. 